Hey family, I hope that you are having a great Sunday and I'm so excited for you as you close out this school year and as you get ready to make a lot of transitions. And so this series this month is talking about to never give up on God. As I mentioned before, you will begin to face more challenges as you become an adult and as you transition into different seasons of life or even a different job and different um, area and things like that. You will always face challenges but the one thing about God is he is faithful in who he say he is and he wants you to fully depend and rely on him and to not give up on him even when the challenges seem so overwhelming and so I'm so excited because today you are going to learn about resilience and you are going to learn how important it is and how to fully trust in God to help carry you through any situation that you go through so stay tuned and I hope that you have your pencil and your paper to take notes okay all right I hope you enjoy it My name is Leslie and I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I'm not sure what your story is or what you think about God or faith or what even brought you here, but I want you to know that I am so glad you're here and I'm convinced that no matter what you believe about God, that you will get something out of today's message. It's for every single person in this room because it's all about three words, never giving up. Specifically, we're talking about Resilience, okay? Resilience, it's just our ability to find a reason to keep moving forward and to grow stronger after we've struggled, failed, or faced the hard things that happen in life. And I think we all have the ability to build resilience as we go through life. No matter what happens to us, the good, the bad, and the in-between, we can find the ability to keep going, keep growing, and keep from giving up. That's what resilience has to offer us, and that's what I hope we'll be able to learn more about over the next few weeks. But before we go there, I have two questions I wanna kind of brainstorm together, okay? So the first question is this, what are some things, some words you've heard used to describe God, like powerful or faithful or loving or kind? Like what are some of those words? Think of a few, once you have them in your mind, I'll ask my second question. Okay, second question. Have you ever seen or known God to be that way, right? Those words we described, you're like, oh, I just passed this test, God is so good. Or, oh, we got my favorite meal for dinner, God really is faithful, those kind of things, right? See, here's the thing, and we're about to take a turn, so just go with me, but isn't it easy to come up with a list of nice words to describe God when life is going good? But if we're honest, isn't it true that facing trouble in life can make us question everything we believe about God? We may wonder if God really is who people say God is, right? Like, is God really good to me if my family still broke up? Is God really loving if I'm gonna struggle with depression for however long, right? Is God really worth following when it doesn't seem like God even shows up when I really need God to? Basically, in moments of pain and setback, we start asking ourselves this question. Is God really worth trusting and following. Sometimes we feel like the answer is, yeah, definitely, God, it, God is worth following. But other times, when life gets really tough, we're, we're just not sure. And that's when we can start to struggle to find any reason for sticking with our faith or taking all this God stuff seriously, right? Eventually, there comes a point when these kind of unanswered questions and unresolved tensions might cause us to want to give up on God. When we live in such a difficult time in the world, it's hard to think that God even cares. When life is so stressful and so tough, it's easy to wonder if God is really there to help. When trouble comes, it's easy to think that it might be best to try and get through life on my own. Like, where is God anyway? These are big questions, and they are normal questions to ask when going through a difficult time. And the questions for us as we wonder these things out loud or in our minds is, can God handle this? Does following Jesus really change everything when we go through something super difficult? Is God still good when life is still hard? Well, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus lived, walked, and talked on this earth. And while he was here, several of his closest followers wrote down everything they heard him say and saw him do. 
Those events are found in four books of the Bible known as the Gospels, each one named after the guy who wrote it. We've got Matthew, we've got Mark, Luke, and John. See, I'm telling you this because it's super important. It's super important because it means that the words we're reading in these books aren't just words. They're real things that Jesus said to his followers that can still help us today. And it also means that we have a record from the people who actually hung out with Jesus and knew him up close and personal, not just people who heard about him, but who knew him. We get to see what they had to say about him. And that changes everything. Because for generations, the people of Israel had been relying on prophets and priests to tell them what God was like. But there was always kind of this mystery surrounding God until Jesus showed up. Jesus came to clear up any confusion. He's the perfect representation of what God is like. And when it comes to building a resilient faith, this is super helpful to keep in mind. Today, we're gonna look at something Jesus said when talking with his closest friends, telling them what was ahead for them in life. Take a look at this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Did you catch that? Jesus tells the disciples that he wants them to have peace. Why? Because he knows what lies ahead for them in this world. Trouble. Let's be honest, that does not sound like great news, does it? I mean, who wants to hear Jesus basically say, I want you to have peace about everything because life is gonna be hard. To the disciples listening, this wouldn't have been that surprising. I mean, they were lower income, Jewish people living in the Roman Empire where speaking out or challenging the authority could get you killed. They lived knowing that every day. They understood trouble. But there was a part of them that maybe thought that this Jesus guy would come and change things. Maybe he would fix all the wrong stuff and do away with all the hard stuff. But then Jesus says this, right? He says, you'll have trouble. And the crazy thing is the disciples had no idea how true Jesus' words were. Like that very night, Jesus was actually going to be arrested, given an unfair trial. You know how we feel about unfair trials, been beaten and then crucified on a cross. So when Jesus says, you will have trouble, he is speaking to the disciples, but he is also speaking about himself. Jesus knows that no one escapes the difficulty in this world, not even Jesus. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't stop there. Keep reading with me. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus tells us that we can take heart, meaning that we can have confidence, we can be encouraged because he has overcome everything that the world can throw at us. Again, the disciples have no idea what's about to happen, like how Jesus is just hours away from death, but, they also don't know that they were just a few days away from Jesus coming back to life. So when Jesus says, I have overcome the world, he is talking as the son of God who will literally die and literally overcome death, the worst trouble and the worst thing that life can throw at us. And that means that all the trouble we face, Jesus has overcome. All the pain, all the disappointment, all the suffering, all the trouble that comes with living in this world, Jesus has overcome it. But okay, let's be honest, what, what does that mean exactly? What it means is that the worst stuff isn't the final word. It means when things get bad, and they will, the story isn't over. When Jesus defeated death, he rewrote the end of the story. Suffering and pain and loss don't win. Jesus and everything Jesus represents, like love, compassion, mercy, grace, goodness, justice, and peace, all of that is what wins. That is what has the final word. There's another way to think about this that helps me remember that our dark and difficult days do not have the final word. Let me show you. Have you ever spent time thinking about tunnels? Tunnels create paths in places that just a few hundred years ago would have been impossible to pass through. Hills, mountains, even bodies of water. When you're in a tunnel, going through twists and turns, you're aware of the pressures around you. 
hundreds of tons of mountain or water pressure or stone and concrete surround you. Gravity and weight trying to do everything it can to crush you, but no, the tunnel makes a way. Because of the twists and turns on the journey, you can't always see where the tunnel will end, but you know there is a way through. You're not trapped in a hole. It won't stop at a dead end. You can know that if you choose to keep going, you will come into a spacious place, a place of light and freedom, even if in the moment it may seem pretty far down the road. This is what God does as we go through difficult circumstances in life. When Jesus says he has overcome the world, he's not saying that we'll never go through anything difficult. He is saying though that no matter the pressure, no matter the weight, no matter how challenging it is, he will make a way through the difficulty we face. We can be confident that he is with us, providing safe passage, leading us through to the other side and making a way out. And I know it doesn't seem like it when we're in it. The uncertainty and the waiting are the last things we would choose, but we can be confident that the dark days of life eventually bring us out into a safe place. No matter what, God will bring us out of the darkness and into a brighter reality. We can be confident that in this world, we can have peace because Jesus has overcome anything the world can put in our way. We don't give up on God even when life gets tough because we know that God always has the final word. It can be so helpful for us when we stop to remember that our stories don't end in the difficult moments. We can always choose to trust that God's love, compassion, mercy, grace, goodness, justice, and peace will always have the final word. And knowing that that is true, like living as though that is true, that can help us build resilience. How? Because that means that even in our darkest, hardest moments, we can have faith in who Jesus is and what Jesus did and what that means for our story and our hurt. Things, yes, they can get bad. They will get bad, but the story isn't over. Jesus' death and resurrection show us that bad things happen, but God is not done working. We can trust God in our trouble because the story isn't over. We can trust that God is good and that God is with us. And when we do, that is when we build a more resilient faith. And a resilient faith is one that never gives up on God. A resilient faith knows that God is still working. See, if Jesus, facing arrest and death, never gave up on God, then we too can choose not to give up on God. If the disciples who spent time with Jesus and faced their own persecution and death for their faith, and they never gave up on God, then we too can choose not to give up on God. No matter what trouble you're dealing with, you can choose to never give up on God. Every circumstance you face, every trouble that comes your way, Everything that tries to convince you that God isn't good or that God can't be trusted. Listen, we can be resilient in the face of all of those things, knowing that God is walking with us, working for us, and helping us get through it all. In those hard and awful moments, listen, you have access to a God who is in it with you. Yes, in this world you will have trouble, but because of Jesus, because of the resurrection, you can also have peace. And I believe that that can give you hope in even the most hopeless of circumstances, the kind of hope that changes everything, the kind of hope that helps you believe that you can get up, you can keep going, you can still believe that there's still good that can come because of God. It's the kind of hope that helps you build resilience in your faith. So what can you begin doing now to have a resilient faith when facing difficult things? Well, start by asking yourself a few questions. We talked about it last week and we're gonna talk about it next week, but today I want you to start by asking these questions. Ask yourself what is happening, right? Ask yourself what troubles in your life, whether now or from the past, are causing you to wonder if God is good or worth following. Maybe it was someone who let you down in a significant way. Maybe it was something that happened that was totally out of your control. Maybe it was something tragic or traumatic. Maybe it was something like a Christian, the last person you thought, said or did that caused you to question everything. Like get really honest about what is happening or has happened that caused you to want to give up on God. 
That's the first step. Next, I want you to ask yourself, what's true no matter what? See, answering this question isn't like a quick fix and it isn't saying that the trouble you're facing isn't big or real or overwhelming, but asking this question will begin to shift the way you see your circumstances, which is exactly where resilience begins. The truth is, no matter what trouble you faced, are facing or will face in the future, Jesus is with you. He's not overwhelmed by your problems or your doubts. He's not ignoring it. He's not overpowered by it and he will help you walk through it. In other words, he can help you build resilience as you keep going step by step through it. And remembering that God is good and God is still writing the story will give you a different perspective. Those are things that are true no matter what. And maybe another question you can ask yourself is what can you do? When everything feels like it's falling apart, when the trouble feels overwhelming, maybe a great place to start is by getting back to the basics. Remember what we know to be true about God because of Jesus. And we can remember what we know to be true about what Jesus offers us. We can remember that God is good. God is with us. God gives us peace. And because of that, we can choose to never give up on God. But I get it. If getting to that place feels too difficult right now, start with just giving the trouble you're facing to God on a daily basis. It is so important to talk to God about what you're going through. It doesn't have to be fancy or formal, but it should be real. Instead of giving up on God when you experience trouble, get honest with God. Talk openly about the questions you have, the doubts you're experiencing, or the help that you need. Continue to show up and connect with God. That's a great way to build a resilient faith. Look, I know that trying to show up with a real faith is difficult when life is difficult. Developing a resilient faith isn't really easy, especially when you've been hurt, forgotten, disappointed, or so much more. In those moments, of course, you're tempted to believe that God isn't the God you thought. That's why it is so important to remember what is true. That's why we're gonna take a few minutes right now to do just that, to remember what's true. I know that life gets busy and time to slow down and talk to God can sometimes be hard to find, but I also believe that it is so important that we're gonna take a few minutes to do that. If you're new to prayer or church, please don't feel any pressure to participate, but maybe consider taking some time to think about some of the things that some of us are gonna pray through. Here's how it's gonna work. Over the next few minutes, I'm gonna give you three prompts of things that you can pray about. After I give you the prompt, you'll have a little time to talk to God about this area of your life. You can feel free to pray out loud, sit quietly, or even write down your prayer. Just please don't distract anyone that's praying next to you. At the end of each prompt, I'll say, thank you, Lord, for overcoming blank, to close out that moment and move us on to the next. Okay, got it? Good, okay, please remember, God is not looking for fancy words or perfectly crafted prayers. God just wants your honesty, your vulnerability, and your authenticity. Let's do this together. Here's your first prompt. Take one minute and thank God for the difficult circumstances that God has brought you through. Thank you, Lord, for overcoming the circumstances of our past. Now, take one minute and tell God how you feel about what you're currently going through in life. Maybe things are going great and you want to thank God. Maybe things are overwhelming and you want to ask for help. Just be real and share how you feel.
Thank you, Lord, for overcoming the things that are overwhelming us now and for helping us be grateful for all the good we are experiencing. Okay, let's take one more minute and ask God to help us to be people with resilient faith, no matter what comes our way in the future, to learn to trust God more each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for overcoming anything that comes our way in the future. We don't know what highs and lows are ahead, but we trust that you are always with us and have overcome the world. Amen. When you head to small groups, be thinking about how everyone in your group has gone, is going, or will go through something that will require a resilient faith. Be thinking about how you can encourage each other to never give up on God when you face life's challenges. And keep in mind, sometimes showing up and just being honest is the most resilient thing you can do. Remember, never give up on God. And with that in mind, I want you to think about this question as you head out today. What's one thing I want to remember is true about God no matter what? I hope that that lesson was good for you and that you got a lot of notes and things to think about this week or even in the future as you may go through challenges. One of my favorite scriptures is in Hebrews and it talks about God can be trusted to keep his promises. And so as you um, endure life challenges, just rest in short that God will keep his promises and that you can go through any challenge and situation with peace and know that you are going to come out on top no matter how it looks. So I hope that you are encouraged and I pray that you have a great week this week. Bye.